Hello, I'm Des Belt, Chair of the Electric Utility Industry Sustainable Supply Chain Alliance, or the Alliance for short. Uh, we're a group of 16 investor-owned utilities in North America that have come together to work on improving the sustainability in our uh, supply chain, specifically looking at the products and services that we purchase and how we run our own supply chain operations with a view to looking for opportunities to reduce our environmental impacts. Uh, in so doing, uh, we recognize that uh, we can't be successful on our own. Uh, we need the help of our suppliers and others if we are going to improve the sustainability of our supply chain. And one area that we are particularly interested in is uh, the greenhouse gas impacts of the products and services that we purchase and looking for opportunities to reduce those. One of the uh, stakeholders that we've been very actively working with in the Alliance uh, is the federal government. And um, we have two members of the government that are going to be uh, working with us uh, today, sharing their views on where the opportunities are in the supply chain to improve our environmental impacts. And I'd like to begin by introducing Roger Kilmer. Thanks, Des. Uh, hello, I'm Roger Kilmer. I'm the director of the NIST Manufacturing and Extension Partnership, better known as MEP. Uh, MEP is a nationwide network of centers around the country that work with small and medium-sized manufacturers to help them improve their productivity and also to look at what are those new opportunities to grow their company. Uh, we focus on implementing technology uh, into their processes and products. Uh, we help them look at how they fit into supply chains. Uh, we certainly help them look at what are the issues in terms of sustainability and also to in turn that into what are those opportunities uh, in things such as the renewable energy area and, and green products. For us to be successful at this, we can't really do this alone uh, as an MEP system. We really need partners to bring in who've got the expertise uh, in particular in things in the environmental and sustainability area. Uh, one of our key partners is the Environmental Protection Agency. So let me introduce my friend and colleague, Tom Murray. Thank you, Roger. Like the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, we at the EPA have also been working with manufacturers for about 20 years, primarily in the areas of pollution prevention and replicating environmental best practices. I represent the Pollution Prevention Program at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. And one of the things that we have learned over the last few years is that if we pool our resources with those of the Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program and others, we can achieve great success, such as the Green Suppliers Network and the new E3 framework, E3 standing for economy, energy and the environment. But the real winners are American manufacturers, small to medium-sized enterprises, representatives of manufacturing supply chains. Now you may be asking yourself, you know, I recycle. I've been taking positive steps to improve my energy efficiency. I'm using materials more efficiently. I've even talked to a local byproduct synergy group to see whether we could work together to turn some of my byproduct material into a profitable revenue stream for my company. So what else can I do? Let's go visit a facility, General Cable, and look at them as they go through a sustainability evaluation. General Cable, if you don't know, is a publicly traded Fortune 500 company. We're one of the leading wire and cable suppliers in the world. General Cable is focused tremendously on continuous improvement. And we focus those efforts also on waste reduction, uh, recycling. We look at every way we can to try to eliminate hazardous waste or at least reduce our, our dependence upon those. Every facility within General Cable, every plant, has a, has a waste reduction goal. So every year we do try to reduce whether it's hazardous substances, water, or consumption of energy. General Cable's 250,000 square foot Duquoin, Illinois plant is a medium-sized manufacturing site with 175 associates producing low and medium voltage power cable for electric utility companies. 
Mary Halleck, a Manufacturing Extension Partnership Specialist with more than 20 years of manufacturing experience, is performing a sustainability evaluation with General Cable. To ensure her and the General Cable Associates get the most out of the visit, a walkthrough and a meeting with plant leadership regarding expectations and special requests has taken place. We now join the evaluation in progress. There are many contributors to greenhouse gas or GHG emissions. Excessive amounts of inventory and or overproduction both result in unnecessary GHG emissions. Collaborative planning between suppliers and their customers helps avoid overproduction and at the same time ensure that the correct quantity of product is available at the right time. In typical audits, Mary evaluates the quantities of raw material and work in progress. To determine whether correct quantities exist, Mary looks for signs of overproduction and materials that may have been prematurely brought on site. Either situation may result in GHG emissions. You want to move inventory through your facility as quickly as possible and not have it sitting around. So your raw materials, you want to bring it in just in time for use and you don't want a lot of um, work in process, work in the middle of the processes or a lot of inventory at the end. You want to make sure it moves through the plant and out to get your cash flow going. You want to use 100% of your raw material in order to avoid having to destroy or throw away materials that you're not using. To offset any discovered excess GHG emissions, Mary determines whether scrap is being reclaimed at the end of the processes. Related opportunities exist in over-processing. For each additional step or each unnecessary extension of an existing step, GHG emissions are being used. As Mary assesses work processes, she focuses on each step, determining if the steps are necessary for the customer or redundant. Additional steps create opportunities for GHG emissions. Oftentimes, using what is found in one plant helps another manufacturing facility reduce its GHG emissions. When information sharing is permitted, multiple industries can improve. Collaboration planning between the supplier and their customer is key. The most common overprocessing opportunities come from producing more than what is needed by the customer. In some cases, transportation represents the most recognized source of GHG emissions. We know reducing the miles a product needs to be transported reduces GHG emissions. Mary and her peer MEPs across the country find that the miles forklifts drive in plants are often overlooked. A forklift using 1,000 gallons of propane fuel annually results in GHG emissions equivalent to 5.9 metric tons of CO2. 1,000 gallons of diesel results in 10.2 metric tons of CO2. Another option, battery-powered forklifts, further improves GHG emissions. Like inventory and overproduction waste, defects represent GHG emissions which can be reduced. Mary evaluates the preventive maintenance program, training programs, and work instructions to see how defects are handled. Mary works with the plant leadership team to identify corrective and preventive action that ensures defects and unnecessary GHG emissions are reduced. A lot of companies have defects because they're not training their employees against their procedures. They're not either taking the time or even having a process as far as training employees. You can actually put a process to employee training to make sure that, for instance, first shift does things the exact same way as second shift. We end up with a lot of defects in that regard because the first shift knows some tricks that the second shift doesn't know and so that knowledge transfer doesn't take place. Another problem with defects um, can be the fact that you're wasting materials. Um, you know, if you have to scrap things, obviously you put the labor into it, you purchase those materials and then at best you're going to get scrap value. Oftentimes it even ends up going to landfill and you're basically paying for it twice. You're paying to bring it in, work on it, and then um, paying to have someone take it away. General Cable already controls their production by standard work practices, 
which puts them well ahead of many manufacturers. And while weighting is not directly related to GHG emissions, that is, unless equipment is idling while the crews wait, no one is a fan of waiting. If Mary encounters waiting, she tries to identify the source. Often, it is a result of unbalanced workflow. The greatest source of waiting tends to come from a technology which was supposed to reduce waiting. Information systems. There is a lot of equipment to examine when determining energy efficiency opportunities. If you can hear leaks from the air compressor system, chances are you have a GHG emission reduction opportunity. Leaks are signs of an inefficient system. Mary also looks for systems set too high or feeding lines which no longer are in use. Compressed air is probably one of the most overlooked utilities um, in a facility. Um, we find that people are very bad at the way they manage their compressors and compressors, compressed air is actually a very expensive utility. Um, it's not easy to compress air and the cooler it is, the easier it is to compress. So you want to make sure that you've stuck that compressor in an area where you have access to cool air if at all possible, either, especially in the winter months, um, pulling in cold air from the outside, um, not putting it, you know, right next to your boiler room. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's funny how oftentimes people just kind of throw their compressor in at the last, you know, that's the last thing they think about and they end up in a suboptimal place of putting it. Um, another thing that you want to pay attention to in compressed air is leaks. Um, very few people that I'm finding have actual preventive maintenance programs in their facilities that can save thousands of dollars a year and generally the fixes are um, very easy but you've got to maintain it, you can't let it go. Another thing is people will run their compressed air at too high a pressure. Um, they don't need the, the pressure that they're using and so you're wasting energy and compressing air more than it needs to be compressed. GHG emissions can be reduced if insulation is placed on steam lines or uninsulated hot water lines. Another option is reusing process air. Chillers and HVAC equipment need to be properly sized. Local utilities may be able to assist with cost recovery for these and other alternatives. Pumps and motors, when incorrectly sized, can be the source of excessive GHG emissions. Various commercial programs exist to determine the appropriate size for the application. If ventilation fans aren't working efficiently, energy is being wasted. Fans and blowers that run too frequently also waste energy. Well, some of the opportunities that I saw were with electrical things going and nobody around. For instance, lights on in areas that they probably could have either delamped or um, reduce the lighting in the area. There were fans going that were blowing on equipment but not on people and my belief is they're probably there for the comfort of the employees. So you just want to make sure that you're not using things or, or keeping things running that aren't being useful um, because that contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. One of the areas that people don't think about when they're thinking about en energy consumption is their vending machine area because generally they're not their vending machines, they're owned by a vending machine company and so they're ignoring it. But in fact it's using up energy, you're feeding the electricity into it to keep them running. So you want to work with your vending machine um, managing company to make sure that those are um, you know, put on misers, the lights are turned off, the compressors aren't allowed to run for so long. In general, a reduction in energy use of any of these areas will result in a reduction of GHG emissions. There is a lot to look at, but energy efficiency is one of the easiest ways to save money. Mary's review identified additional opportunities for General Cable to conserve energy, although they're a step ahead with their relamping project. Don't forget to check with your local utility to learn more about programs in your area. Water is another valuable resource that must be conserved where possible. 
reduction of unnecessary water use results in a reduction of GHG emissions. Surprisingly, wire manufacturers can have as many water-saving opportunities as other types of manufacturing processes where water is used. GHG emissions can be expended in the creation of chemicals. Mary reviews for unnecessary chemicals and offers more sustainable alternatives. Chemicals are, are not unlike other raw materials in that you want to use them um, as efficiently as possible. You don't want to be disposing of them. So a lot of people think in terms of the um, volatile emissions of chemicals. So to the extent that you can move to less volatile compounds in um, the types of chemicals that you're using. Perhaps instead of a solvent cleaner, you use a water-based cleaner. Um, you make sure that your um, employees are less exposed to the, the emissions from the chemicals if you reduce them. Um, so it makes not only for better environmental, perhaps even reducing your reporting, but also makes for safer employees in that they're not being exposed to the, the chemical emissions. The final area of evaluation is waste related to energy, water, garbage, transportation, emissions, even biodiversity. Opportunities are identified and presented to plant leadership along with alternate technologies, suggestions for changes in raw materials or procedural changes. If you look at waste in general as a bigger um, opportunity than just lean waste, you know, you look at the fact that you're throwing things away that you've spent money to bring into the facility. Anything that goes out to landfill, you've purchased at some point. As part of the solution package, MEP calculates the return on investment for these options. There are real dollars in waste reduction and reclamation, which impacts companies' bottom lines. Waste generally means raw materials were not used as efficiently as possible resulting in unnecessary costs and GHG emissions. Green will help you make money. Um, if, you, if you save those resources and use them wisely, um, you're going to see returns in your business. You're going to see new opportunities that you hadn't thought of. You're going to be putting on a different shade of glasses, so to speak, um, to look at your business in an entirely different way. Um, and again, set yourself apart from the competition um, and allow yourself to, um, to manage your resources much more wisely as a whole, not just looking at your employees and the machines that you're working with. What you have seen is only the bare essence of the evaluation process. A typical MEP evaluation lasts two to three days, which includes the GHG evaluation and a value stream mapping exercise. The result? A plan for cost-saving opportunities and the identification of areas for product and process innovations. Let's hear directly from General Cable to learn more about energy conservation and GHG reduction. We get very excited about working with the Alliance. Every day we, we have an opportunity to work with many of the utility partners to work on uh, individual reduction goals. As we can work together, I think we can better the industry, we can improve ourselves, but we can also share these learnings across the board. And I think as we expand beyond these 16 utilities, we may find that we can help the entire utility industry as a whole. General Cable adopted the Lean Six Sigma program over 10 years ago, and it's really paid off huge dividends. Specifically here at DeCoin over the last four years, we've reduced natural gas consumption by over 20% and we've improved our recycling by over 400%. Our culture is all around continuous improvement. So while we're in the philosophy of lean is continuous improvement. So we look to other parts of the industry that they can help us. So we're hopeful that this evaluation will find new areas for us where we can focus our efforts so that we can achieve even better results. It's been a pleasure hosting the Alliance at, at the DeCoin facility. We were very happy to have you. We're really hopeful that we'll learn a lot from, from the evaluation, and we'll look forward to speaking with you soon. But now back to you, Roger. This evaluation that Mary provided to General Cable is just one of the services that our MEP centers provide uh, to our small and medium-sized manufacturers as they look for opportunities to grow, uh, to get new customers, and to get in new supply chains. And with that, I'd like to thank Des and the members of the Alliance uh, for their support on sustainability and helping the small manufacturers of the U.S.
My pleasure, Roger. And once again, uh, we hope that you have found uh, this video informative and that you'll be able to take something away from it and better understand where the opportunities are to reduce the greenhouse gas effects of the products and services you supply to the industry. So I'd like to thank the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the US EPA, General Cable DeCoin, and of course our friends in Ameren and their video crew for helping us uh, shoot this, uh, this material. Thank you for atten your attention. Um, and please, if you do want to find out more information about this area, uh, take note of the websites on the screen uh, and you'll be able to find more information there. We look forward to hearing from you about the progress you're making in improving the sustainability of your supply chain. Thank you.